iOS 14 marks a major milestone for the iPhone. It's a massive update filled with features that we've been asking for for years now. I've got it installed on my iPhone here today, so let's take a look. The most major thing that iOS 14 does is it changes the way we look at our home screen. For the past 13 years, since the original iPhone came out, it's looked pretty much exactly like this. In fact, here is the original iPhone, and you can see straight off the bat, a lot of the general functionality has remained pretty much the same since iPhone OS version 1.0. There's a dock down the bottom, and then there's other apps. Now, this original iPhone didn't have multiple pages that came out a little bit later, but pretty much for the past 12 years, the whole bunch of apps, you can rearrange them, and they're on a couple pages, has not changed, at least until now. Instead of just having a whole bunch of pages of apps, we now have at the very end, the app library. And what this does is sort through and logically arrange all of our different applications. And essentially this means we can cut back on the number of pages we have. So instead of having a whole bunch of messy apps and then some folders with apps in them, we can rely on this if we need to find anything in particular that we wouldn't use very often. And you can also use the search functionality, which by default will sort all of your apps in alphabetical order, or obviously you can search for something. Now this is great for app organization, as it means you don't have to swipe through 16 pages to find all of your apps, which let's be honest, you probably don't use that often anyway. But what I think is actually more interesting is that now you can customize for the first time the actual function of your home screen. For pretty much the past 13 years, the home screen has been a location where you launch apps. The only data you can really get is, uh, well, it says the date on the calendar app and that updates. But other than that, they're just icons. Now recently, Apple has addressed that by adding the Today View, which in iOS 14 receives a notable update. You can see it looks a lot more clean and modern. We have these interesting data-rich cards. But what's really interesting and what's new with iOS 14 is we can now add these to the home screen. So for example, I can grab this, edit home screen, and I can drag it over and put it right here in the middle of everything. Now there are a couple of different sizes for these and they basically range from big ones like this screen time all the way down to smaller ones which we can pull up by adding the plus icon and we can add a smart stack which can be either small, uh, which looks like this, it's four, it's basically a two by two grid or we can add a larger two by four. And through these various different widgets, we can add a lot of information to the home screen without having to go into an app every time we wanna pick it out. So for example, let's do a small weather widget and we can rearrange that. Let's put it right over here. Actually, let's put it down here and then we can put the smart stack right there in the middle. So as you can see, there's a lot more customization than there was before. And with this smart stack, we can scroll through the most used widgets that have the most pertinent information. Now that will actually update contextually based on your usage, the time of day. So if you wake up, it might have news and later in the day, it might show activity. There's a lot of functionality that this adds. This is something that a lot of people have been looking for. It's been on Android for ages, the ability to add widgets to your home screen, and now finally, we have it here on iOS. iOS 14 also gives us a lot more flexibility in where apps live and how much screen real estate they take up. For a long time, videos, Siri, and calls were full screen. Now all of these have been made more compact. Calls come in like normal notifications, Siri opens in a small contextual window, and videos can automatically resize themselves into picture-in-picture -picture windows that float on top of your other apps. Now, the thing that's a little bit weird is if we bring up Siri, then it'll show as a small compact card, but if we try to actually interact with the home screen or any of our applications, the Siri window will disappear. So 
It's a little strange. In keeping with this theme of reducing the number of things in iOS that run in full screen mode, Apple is introducing a new feature called App Clips. These are tiny sub 10 megabyte applets that can launch contextually based on NFC codes. They don't require downloading a full app and are very easy to interact with. Now, the main criticism that's going to get leveled against iOS 14 is that Android has had all of this for years, and that's very true. But even though it's been done before, I think Apple's implementation here and the way that they've chosen to change the way iOS has worked on a very fundamental level was well implemented. It doesn't seem strange or off-putting as a longtime iOS user. Now, for the longest time, I actually kind of preferred having apps in pages instead of having the slightly more complex organization in Android. And what I like about this is it still retains much of that simplicity. We still have a couple of pages and then basically an app repository for everything on our phone. And it just kind of cleans things up while adding more information. That's a rare combination. It's simpler and also more complex. Also, there are a number of notable changes within Apple's apps. So let's start with messages. You can now pin conversations to the top of the list, making it much easier to come back to important conversation. Also notable within messages is, thanks to Apple's favorite words, the neural engine and advanced machine learning, dictation is now run on device. So the data doesn't have to leave your device and it's really, really snappy. This technology is also what powers the new Translate app, which Apple claims is near instantaneous. And again, all of the work is done on device. Let's see just how instantaneous it is. So here's a test of my voice. Let's see how quickly it's able to dictate all of this. And then I'll press this button and... Así que aquí hay una prueba de mi voz que verlo rápido. Wow, that is pretty quick. Apple Maps also receives a noticeable update here. Mainly, you can now tailor routes specifically for electric vehicles, and this will take into account things like hills and weather and the effect that that will have on your range. And it can also plan out when you should stop and where you should stop for charge points. You can also use Apple Maps to plan out bicycle rides, which is very nifty because it can now show where the hills are as well as where you might have to carry your bike up the stairs. Or you can actually route around it and say no stairs if you don't want to do that, which is also pretty handy. There are a few other interesting tidbits here, like some changes to CarPlay that allow you to set a new wallpaper, as well as a few new apps to bring some of this new functionality to the car. Also, AirPods can now automatically switch between whichever device is active. I'm not sure how foolproof that'll be, but once iPadOS, iOS, and macOS are closer to release, we should be able to test that functionality out to see if it's actually any good. And finally, in a move that I think is actually really, really important, Apple is boosting their transparency as it relates to the data that is harvested by app developers. In the near future, the App Store will display what data app developers have access to and collect. So you'll be able to know right on the homepage of the app in the App Store, what data they will have access to. That I think is a really, really cool feature and it will probably deter some of the sneaky data collection habits that a lot of app developers have these days. So that's iOS 14 in a nutshell. Personally, I'm very, very happy with this update. Obviously, some of the features are still in need of being flushed out. This is literally day one of the developer beta being available. So obviously once we get closer to release, there will be a lot more functionality and fewer bugs. Another thing that's interesting to note about iOS 14 is it supports all of the same iPhones as iOS 13, which means even this old guy, an iPhone 6S can run iOS 14. That's actually huge. And I think a really, really interesting and unique thing that Apple does. A five-year-old smartphone getting the most current version of iOS. That is pretty much unheard of in the Android world. Two or three years is really the most you can expect on an Android phone, but this thing is positively ancient in the smartphone world. And yet here it is 
running iOS 14, albeit definitely a little bit more slowly than my iPhone XS Max. This year's WWDC did not disappoint. We were all a little bit nervous when the rumors came out yesterday that there weren't going to be any hardware announcements. We were all like, oh, well, that's kind of a bummer. But this year, for both iOS and macOS, this was a very, very substantial update. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of iOS 14. A lot of these are features that we've just needed for a long time, and iOS was starting to feel a little bit stale and dated without them. I'm curious, let me know in the comments below what you think of this update to iOS. Is this a major step forward, or is this just playing catch up to Android? And what do you think of the implementation here? As I mentioned earlier, I personally think that this is a great way to simplify and also expand the functionality and the data that you have access to at a glance, although you could definitely make the argument that it doesn't have as much versatility as Android widgets. Let me know your take on this in the comments below. Please consider following me on Twitter at Luke Miani for updates, and as usual, my subreddit is linked in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that out. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.